Dear fellow travelers, today we invite you to accompany us on a walk in the Valley of Fire. According to me this is one of the most underrated national parks in USA. Most people probably are skipping it on their way to Zion, Grand Canyon, or Bryce Canyon, and believe me, they are missing a lot. In just a few hours you can see. The Fire Wave. White Domes. Pastel Canyon. Rainbow Vista. 2000 years old petroglyphs. Arch Rock. And the Elephant Rock. We have started our tour from the Fire Wave Trail, and I advise you to do the same. If you are entering the park from the west entrance, you will probably pass by Otlatl Rock and Arch Rock, but you can leave them for the end of your visit, since the Arch Rock is very well lit for photography near sunset. The Fire Wave Trail is an easy hike, and it is better to do it in the morning, as there is little shade in the area, and at midday can become too hot. The main attraction of course is the wave itself, but the nearby rock formations are also worthy of your attention. You can climb the ice cream rock as we playfully named it for better view of the area and additional photo opportunities, but be careful as the rock face is rather steep. Right across the road from the start of the Fire Wave Trail is the location of the White Domes Trail. Even if you decide to skip it, as we did, you can enjoy an excellent vista with a lot of photographic opportunities and amazing rocks to explore close to the parking area. Next we jumped in the car and drove to Pink Canyon or Pastel Canyon, which is the other name for this formation. You can easily miss the parking spot as it accommodates only a few cars, and you need to cross the road in order to set foot on the start of the trail. This canyon is something you don't want to miss, especially if you are into photography. The nuances of pink and yellow are so abundant here, I am surprised that this little canyon is not as famous amidst photographers as the Antelope Canyon. The best photos can be taken on an overcast day and luckily we had just enough clouds for the true colors of the rocks to show up. Our next stop on the road was a little detour along the Fire Canyon Road. There is a parking spot at the end of the road, and to be honest the best view is not at the designated spot, but somewhere between the tourist platform and the main road. You can check the coordinates in the description below the video. From here you can marvel at the layers of yellow and brown rocks, often mixed together like a cake. If you bother to climb some of the rocks, which are half a mile from the road you can have a really good look at the formations along Rainbow Vista, even without making the trail with the same name. We made our lunch break here, and it was memorable. Further down the road is the Petroglyph Canyon Trail. The petroglyphs are dated from 300 BC to 1150 AD, and were carved in the rocks by the ancestral Puebloans, also known as the Anasazi. The petroglyphs were etched into desert varnish, a layer of dark rock on top of the sandstone. The desert varnish is a patina of iron and manganese that leached from the rock and evaporated over the course of thousands of years. Besides the petroglyphs you can observe here the so-called honeycomb and other cavernous weathering of the rocks. Current explanation for this phenomenon is of a polygenetic origin being the result of complex interaction of physical and chemical weathering processes, which includes salt weathering and cyclic wetting and drying. Cavernous weathering can be observed also in the rocks, surrounding the visitor center, which we were able to photograph, while we waited for the opening hours, since we arrived too early in the morning. Near sunset we succeeded to reach the arch rock. As I have mentioned before, you can make beautiful photos at this time of the day of this formation, which resembles woodwork with its soft curves and striated layers of rock. Nearby is also Otlatl Rock, but we just passed by and had a quick look from the car in order to have more time for the Elephant Rock, which is situated near the east entrance of the park. In order to reach Elephant Rock you have to walk half a mile from the parking lot to the spot from where you can take photos. I highly recommend to be there just before sunset and catch the last rays of light. From the Elephant Rock you have a great panoramic view, which can be a real treat at sunset. We succeeded to catch some extraordinary weather with a distant rain, a rainbow, and some misty mountain peaks, which were difficult to separate from the clouds above them at one point. There is an option to spend the night in the park, so if you want to catch both the sunset and the sunrise, you can stay. We personally hiked until the last sunrays faded away and drove on. I hope you have enjoyed our walk through the Valley of Fire. Stay tuned to my YouTube channel for more exciting trips and adventures around the world.